Hey, hold on to your seats. It's still like Flying United. Welcome to Loose Change. I'm Jim Evans. Thanks for joining us, and you made the right choice today. Great, great guest coming right up, so hang tight. What's been going on, Greg? I'm at home, dozing on the couch, watching TV, and, and I wake up and I see what I think is a sh wildlife show about the world's most dangerous creatures. And then I look closer, it's just video of OJ out at a bar talking to a couple women. So. <laughs> He's out now. <laughs> I also hear this, uh, did you guys hear this ad uh, about uh, Halloween, uh, 11 dimensions of terror, you can go experience this. And I was thinking, gee whiz, that's got to be uh, monsters, ghouls, goblins, skeletons, 1 through 10. And the 11th dimension of terror has to be watching the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> How, t how much uh, terror is that? Good grief. Uh, it has not gone well for the entire team, especially for new wide receiver Kenny Britt. Uh, he struggled, and he's injured, and to maybe help ease the pain some for him, uh, the Turnpike Commission recently sent him an easy pass, and he dropped it. <laughs> Heck, even uh, head coach Hugh Jackson is talking about taking the entire offensive unit to New York to Broadway so they can maybe see plays that actually work. <laughs> I don't know, that might not be a bad idea. What do you guys think? Uh, it's also been somewhat of a struggle here uh, this season. Not the best of seasons so far for Cowboys running back Ezekiel Elliott. Of course, he's had to deal with the suspension thing. And prior to that, a couple months ago, he was in a car crash in Dallas. Fortunately, no one got hurt, but he was cited for going left to center, although he claims he just hit the A-gap. <laughs> Uh, what do we have here? We have something here? This just in. Until further notice, basketball's Rick Pitino will no longer be flying coach. I knew that was coming up. What else? Uh, did you guys hear about this? Walmart is offering a new program where they will deliver groceries to your home even if you're not there. And how it works is they'll set up cameras apparently in your house and you can watch the delivery as it happens from another location. Now think about it. If you've got surveillance cameras inside your house, you're not buying groceries at Walmart. <laughs> Come on. Hey, on deck, Ron Potesta joins us next. Stick around for that big hit right here on Loose Chain. Still trying to decide between EXP and satellite? Let's take a look at the facts. Only EXP from Armstrong offers award-winning local customer support and free service calls with no contracts and no early termination fees. EXP also includes Zoom Internet, the area's fastest, plus an intuitive user interface powered by TiVo for the ultimate TV experience. As you can see, when it comes to EXP versus satellite, there's just no comparison. EXP from Armstrong, this changes everything. Welcome back to Loose Change. I'm Jim Evans, and I had the great pleasure to be joined by local sportscaster and talk host, Ron Potesta. Thanks so much, Ron, for stopping in with us. Great. Wow. Seriously? Hey, man, you're here. Look All at right. this. I uh, appreciate ND, it. The I, I got to wear my, I gotta wear my uh, sweater proudly. He's ready to go. Yeah, I, I think they win this weekend. I'm with you. What we like to do off the top, for those who don't know, you're a local guy, but for those who don't know, uh, we like to have our victims or our guests. Um, <laughs> give us a little resume, where you're from, where you went to school, and how your career took, took its okay. uh, path. I was born in Youngstown, mm -hmm. went to uh, Boardman schools, kindergarten, first and second grade down at Robinwood Lane. And my father decided he wanted to become a pharmacist and have his own business. I mean, he was already a pharmacist. Okay. Uh, he decided he wanted to go into business for himself. Why he didn't go to Boardman, stay in Boardman, eh, whatever. Uh, he decided that he wanted to move down to Columbiana County. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. So found a place uh, in Washingtonville, a, a pharmacy that he built uh, on his own. Built a house in Letonia and ran a drugstore in, in uh, Washingtonville and... Graduated from Letonia High School. I uh, have always known that I wanted to be in broadcasting. So uh, college wasn't for me. 
uh, I'm too lazy. That's got to be, <laughs> yeah, too lazy to do the work. Uh, so I went to broadcasting school instead. Well, honesty is virtue. So. Well, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> it is. I, 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 hey, look, I made I made a lot of mistakes, you know, between between the youth and now. I made a ton of mistakes. Hey, that's that's one of the life. big ones yeah. that that I didn't take my education too seriously. Um, so I graduated from broadcasting school, uh, found a bunch of different jobs that weren't involved in sports. Finally got involved in sports, I want to say in the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, here in, at home mm -hmm. in Youngstown, right. uh, ran a, the first all sports radio station, uh, which was on, the, I think, the east side of Youngstown. Uh, and we did, oh God, we did high school football, baseball, basketball games. And I thought to myself, you know, I, I, I want to see if I can get in, involved and do a Major League Baseball. And tried. Got 12 years in Minor League yeah. Baseball. Got as high as Double A ball. Yeah. Uh, didn't play politics. Gee, what a shock. And uh, <laughs> back here. I'm, I'm, I love this area. It's, it's home. It's, you know, I, my, uh, my parents, knock on wood, they're still alive. And uh, you know, I mean, this is a this is a great area, and I just absolutely love the people around here. What was it about sports? It was always going to be sports casting. What what got you locked in? Like Honestly, that? I I think the the probably the the place that I that I found out I wanted to do this was in Pittsburgh. I was a Saturday afternoon. Our our youth group went to Three Rivers and decided to check a Saturday afternoon game out. Pirates were playing St. Louis. They were just getting destroyed. Uh, and the youth group decided they wanted to leave at the end of the eighth inning. Well, apparently no one told me because I stuck around till the end of the game. <laughs> and I'm looking around going, where the heck is everybody? So I'm walking, literally walking around the stadium. It's a good hour and change wow. after the game is over. And I, I, I'm walking around, and this game was played as the national game of the week on NBC. And I walk over by the NBC truck, and some guy's doing some stuff. And I, I'm sure he doesn't want to pay any attention to a 9, 10-year-old kid. But I asked him a couple of things, and I was always into sports. And I asked him a couple of things, and he's like, eh. He's, I guess he just said a couple of things just to get, it, get, get me out mm -hmm. of his hair. But I was like, you know what? This is what right I want to do. Wow. Yeah, this is what I want to do. So I hear my name announced saying, yeah, Ron Potesta, go to gate A. Your mother's suicidal. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> so, you know, I go over there and, you know, the bus is still there. My mom gets me into a gigantic bear hug, bawling her eyes out, saying, I thought you were kidnapped. I said, no, Mom, I got great news. I know what I want to do the rest of my life. She goes, you can tell me you'll have plenty of time. You're grounded for the next two weeks. I'm like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so the pharmacy thing was never going to work for you, huh? You're, oh, you're no, I never business. got science. Oh, okay. it used to bother yeah. the hell out of All my right. dad, seriously. He'd be like, how could you not get this? I'm like, I don't, yeah, I don't know, yeah. you know. I mean, uh, no offense, Dad, I want to get into broadcasting. And they, talk, they tried talking me out of it. A lot of people did. But, you know, this and is... And they still would today. <laughs> oh, and they still would today. And I'd buy it. Then, you know, I'd believe them now. <laughs> but, but that's another story. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I... I love sports and I yeah. love broadcasting, and it, it's uh, it, it it beats working for a living. Um, of course, you had the opportunity you mentioned to go to Letonia, and we'll drop a, a good friend of ours oh, uh, in there. Of course, that's when um, uh, Coach Larry Kemp was a part of the oh, yeah. staff with Art Allamore, and uh, you were you were part of that whole thing. They had some good teams. At that oh, they had time, some really they? good teams. Yeah, my seventh and eighth grade when I was in junior high, they were. Through the 70s, they were struggling a, a great big deal. I think my freshman year, it was the fall of 78, 78, 79 school year, they went 5-5, five and five and they upset McDonald the last game of the year. And that kind of jump-started the program a little bit. My sophomore, junior, and senior year, and, and keep in mind, there were no overtimes back in those days. We want to combine 24, 4, and 2. Yeah. Now, also in those days, you didn't get the top eight teams. You only got the right. top two teams. Right. So we never made a playoff mm -hmm. appearance. Had they had the top eight, we would have been home two of the three games and would have made the playoffs all three years. This is something amazing. You're talking about your uh, education and uh, uh, that amazes me that you were in the band, but you never took lessons or learned how to read music, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, how Craziness. Did that, I, mean, you know. I, I don't know. I don't know. How, to this day, I don't know how the, how, how the heck this happened. <laughs> I, I joined the band, and I wanted to play another instrument. But, you know, my mom and dad, 
You know, they basically said, well, your brother's playing trombone. Don't you want to play trombone? I'm thinking to myself, no, but money's tight. There we go. You know, yeah. I'm not going to ask them to buy a new instrument at four or $500 or whatever yeah. the heck it was. Okay, so I'll play trombone. I'll try it out. I was actually pretty good with it, yeah. but I didn't learn how to how to read music. I, I just I was just like I don't I don't get any of this stuff. What 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 is this? What is that? And and I just I decided, okay, I can play this by ear, and I'll just memorize that note, mm -hmm. this position, mm -hmm. that note, well. second position, that note, fourth position, that note, first position, and just played everything by ear. And I actually got away with it until. <laughs> I joined the Warren Jr. Military Band. God bless him. Squire Hurlbrink was one of the greatest people on, on, I the, remember, on the face I of the remember earth. Him. And I do my tryout, and he looks at me and he goes, how the hell <laughs> do, are you able to play your instrument? I said, Squire, I've never read music in my life. And he looked at me and he goes, damn, that's impressive, but we're going to change that. <laughs> well, it worked. It worked. Um, Get to the, the you know, this, an intriguing thing is, you know, you, you got to the uh, minor leagues doing play-by-play, uh, uh, -play and uh, we hear stories about minor league baseball, and, you know, it's a tough road oftentimes, yeah, and, and talk about those experiences. Well, first and foremost, now that I'm out of the business and I'm probably never going to get into the business, let me just say, and I'll, I'll, I'll continue to say it, these people are so grossly underpaid it's oh, for, it's for scary. What you guys have oh, it's again. horrible. It's it's horrible. Yeah, the 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 entertainment's great. Okay, and the prices are inexpensive. Prices are inexpensive because they ain't paying their employees a very good amount of money. Uh, it's it's not good. Uh, now, having said that, people do it, mm -hmm. and people do it because they want to get to the major well, leagues. Kind of like a lot of the players. I mean, Absolutely. You know, not everybody has you know big guarantees. Absolutely. Bonuses. I mean, it's not just the players that are trying to get to the major leagues. Right. The umpires are trying to get to the major leagues. Great the broadcasters point. are trying to get to the major leagues. Anyone that's working in minor league baseball, their ultimate goal is to try to get into major league baseball. So, yeah, you're going to take some lumps along the way. And then you, the argument is, okay, I'm going to take some lumps here, but I'm going to get good. I'm going to catch my break, and I'm going to get into the big leagues, right. and I'm going to ultimately make my money. Sometimes sacrifices, you know, work out to, in the end. Other times you have to go a different road. But what are the, what are the stops along the way that you made? Uh, well, first and foremost, lots ball. of marriages ended over minor well, league baseball. <laughs> well, <I'm not> sure. <laughs> mine, mine was one of them. <laughs> uh, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> now, I, I started in independent ball, which is, um, and interestingly enough, independent ball pays more than organized ball, which is uh, you don't get the uh, good enough talent on the field, but you're getting okay. you're actually getting paid more money uh, by and large to do uh, to do a job with a lesser product. Mm -hmm. um, I started in July of 1998. Uh, halfway through the season, the broadcaster down in Lubbock on the Fourth of July uh, in Lubbock, they used to have a game where they would have 20,000 people in the stands. Well, not all of them were in the stands. What would happen is they would go right to the foul lines and they would set up picnic, uh, you know, the, the, their uh, chairs, lawn chairs mm -hmm. and, and whatnot, and everyone would um, just watch the game in foul territory. There would be no foul territory. And this guy lost his mind on the air saying this is a disgrace to the Texas-Louisiana League. This owner is an idiot. This commissioner is a buffoon. And, uh, yeah, he got let go. <laughs> it's, gee, what a shock. So in, in December of 97, I was in the winter meetings trying to find a job in baseball. And I befriended a guy that was very high up in the Texas-Louisiana League. He ultimately got a job there. Uh, and I get a phone call from my father's drugstore. Because uh, I was working and and doing mm -hmm. the sports on on the radio station in in town, and my dad's like, "This guy in Lubbock, Texas, wants to talk to you." I'm like, "Okay." So I mean, this is a place of business. I don't know what's going on. So I, you know, hey, what's going on? And he's like, "We want you to come down and do the second half of the season in Lubbock." I'm like, "All right, who is this, really?" <laughs> and they're like, no, no, we're serious. I'm like, okay. Do you have Prince Albert in a can? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll let him out before he suffocates. Yeah, you know. Is your refrigerator running? Yeah, it's one of those things. So uh, after, you know, I'm finally realizing this is on the up and up, I'm like, yeah, sure, I can do that. So I packed my car up, 
two months down in Lubbock, Texas. Stayed there until, I don't know, the second week of September. Got back home in time to do uh, three or four high school football games, maybe five or six. And um, did basketball season here. Mm -hmm. And then went back down because the team had folded at the end of the year. But there was another team in the same league that was looking for a broadcaster. So I went to Abilene this time, about three hours to the west of Dallas, uh, about an hour or so outside of Odessa Midland, and did their games in 99. They went out of business. And I'm hmm. thinking, you know, wow. I may want to rethink this a little bit. 2000, I get a job in the California League, and I'm like, all right, now we're cooking. High A ball, everything's going to be great. Two weeks before the season starts, he sells his team, and they bring in a broadcaster. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. So I get my contract for the whole year because I had a contract. Mm -hmm. So I get paid for the whole mm -hmm. year, which really wasn't all that much money. But that's okay. And I came back home, and I'm like, all right. You know, I'm, I'm just not going to – it's not going to work out. I get a phone call out of the blue from a guy from Elmira, New York, which is – about five and a half, six hours from here, three hours from New York City, uh, they have an independent league team. Mm -hmm. And he says, hey, he says, I want you to work for the radio station, but I also want you to be their play-by-play -play broadcaster. I'm like, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Do you have done any sales before? No, but you can teach me. You know, okay, sure. no that's problem. That's part of it. Yep. And that's part yep. of it. Yep. So I did two years in Elmira, New York, mm -hmm. and had an absolute blast. It was a good time. The guy that was the manager of the team was also the general manager of the team. He was a longtime Los Angeles Dodger uh, uh, minor league player, coach, manager, and he was let go when, uh, when the uh, sale of the team happened to Rupert Murdoch. Uh, and John Debus is his name, and he's now working in the Mets organization, still lives in Vero Beach. So... Two years go by after the 2001 season ends. He's down in Vero Beach in his home. Gives me a call about a week and a half after the season was over. He says, hey, he says, uh, they're going to be looking for a, a broadcaster in Vero Beach, Florida. Do you want the job? I said, yeah, I'll take the job. Absolutely. That'll work. Oh, Jim, it was phenomenal. First class organization. Nice. And, and Dodger Town was incredible. Yeah. Absolutely That's incredible. Heard, yeah. yeah. So one year there. Um, the owner of the team that was in Jackson, Tennessee, had a winter home in uh, summer. Uh, actually, vacation. I don't know who the hell vacations in the summertime in Florida. It's hotter yeah, than Yeah, where out. do you go for the summer? Yeah, right? exactly. You know, I mean, what do you go Iceland. back north in, in the yeah. wintertime? I mean, it, it just Iceland. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> anyway, he's down there, and he hears a couple of, of my games, and he's on the verge of buying a double-A team in Jackson, Tennessee. And he's like, well, I found my broadcaster. So I get a call after the season's over. I wanted to stay in Vero. I mean, I had a great time in Vero Beach, Florida. It was beautiful. Uh, the, the state's absolutely gorgeous. The area was fun. The people were incredible. Little did I know the Dodgers were going to screw Vero Beach and get out of there and go to Arizona, but me neither here nor there. Um, but I get, a, I get a job offer from Jackson, Tennessee, the West 10 Diamond Jacks, who are now known as the Jackson Generals, and they said, yeah, come on up. So I came up and started a six-year relationship with, uh, with this family, uh, the Lozenak family, and they sold the team in 2008. I was still married at the time, and this is one of the reasons why my marriage broke up. My wife would stay in Springfield, Illinois, where we later moved after the 2007 season, or 2006 season. We moved to Springfield because she got a, a much higher paying mm -hmm. job. And I said, well, what do you want me to do? And she said, I want you to go down and do baseball, sure. and we'll live apart for six months. Bad move. <laughs> Horrible yeah, move. That Stupid catches move. Catches up with folks. So. Stupid move. Uh, and it ended our marriage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's no two ways about it. Um, so 2007, 2008, and I'm thinking to myself, all right, I, I don't know where I'm going to be staying in Jackson. These guys just took over the Altoona team and. uh they asked, they asked me to, uh, to come with them, and I'm like, yeah, I, I suppose I can do that. Sure. I didn't, but in the back of my mind, I said, you don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do this. This is not a good move, and I didn't listen, and it wasn't a good move. It, it, was, uh, it was a bad, bad well, decision. From, yeah, on in, in that path, per, perhaps, but other things work out, other doors open. Hang on, hold, hold those thoughts. We're going to take a quick break, and uh, we'll be back with more. Ron Potesta here on Loose Change. Hang around. 
Armstrong Local Programming features our community like no one else. Meet your friends and neighbors at special events. Find the perfect pet. Celebrate our region's rich history or enjoy our natural wonders. Armstrong Local Programming is available online, on demand, and on your local Armstrong channel. Find the complete program schedule at armstrongonewire.com. Local programming, exclusively from Armstrong. One Wire, infinite possibilities. Welcome back to Loose Change. I'm Jim Evans along with Ron Potesta. And obviously, you know, you're doing a lot of baseball, play-by-play -play baseball. That's still your probably your biggest passion, Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's the easiest sport for me to do, hands down. Uh, football, okay. Basketball, a little too quick. <laughs> Especially if you haven't memorized the uh, the jerseys and whatnot. <laughs> that, that's that's a tough – that and hockey are two tough sports But you have a to great call. knowledge of baseball. So oh, that, yeah. That, yeah. You know, obviously that plays yeah. into That it. was – I mean, I'd say, Jim, I, I had so much fun in the 12 years, and I learned so much about the game. You hang out with farm directors, general managers. Uh, it's it's just – it's unbelievable. But you end up back, uh, you know, back home and um, other things materialize. And uh, you also have the opportunity now to host your own uh, sports talk show on yeah. the Sports Animal. And uh, you do a great job with that. How do you like that? Well, some people would like me off the air. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of being a good exactly. sports uh, talk exactly. show. Exactly. Look, I mean, if everyone agreed with everything that I yeah. said, I'd yeah. have the most boring show in the world. So. You got you to gotta spice it up a little bit. I mean, I offer my own opinions. People don't always agree with me, and that's fine. That's what it's that's about. That's the way it's supposed it's, to be. Exactly. So you know, um, what are your thoughts on broadcasting in general? The future of uh, specifically radio. Uh, you, you, you know, you hear things. Uh, you know, might down the road uh, be changing, or or perhaps even more. But uh, the what industry, are your the industry's changed an awful lot. Yeah, it has. in the 25, 30 years. It's. Um, Corporations have um, have decided that they want to be a part of of broadcasting for better or for worse, and and in a lot of ways it's been better. In some ways, not so much. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we we tend to listen to people that don't live in Youngstown. You know, I, I remember you and I had a conversation where. Uh, when you were working for uh, a television station in town, hmm? someone uh, hmm? someone went in and said, "Well, you guys shouldn't even be doing high school football." Right. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, where are you from again? Right. Because they around from out of town. Yeah, yeah. because from around yeah. these parts, people love yeah. high school football. People love high school oh. sports in this yes. town. Why anyone would sit back and say, well, you shouldn't be doing high school sports. Yeah. That's absurd. We didn't know who they, it was a consulting firm, and we didn't know who they surveyed. But go out to any stadium on Friday night. And it's not just exclusive to our area, but it is what it is here. Sure. And, and you, you, you see it now, yeah. too. I mean, it's like telling someone, well, you shouldn't have pizza in this town. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> I tend to disagree with that, but okay. <laughs> well, we're talking high school. Uh, of course, uh, you know, we're, we're heading down to the path here and uh, – Shifting that extra gear to get to the playoffs. Right now, as of the taping of the show, what we're, we're 14 local teams would make. Yeah, about 14. And that's pretty much the average that yeah. we have from the prior. Yeah, it might be a little less. I mean, there's some really important games this yes. week and into week 10 uh, where the, the balance could shift a little bit up or down. I think there's going to be more quality than quantity. Uh, in, as in previous years. There was a lot of quantity, but not so much quality. Now, last year we won a state championship in D7 with Warren JFK. Yes. I don't know if there's anyone good enough to get to a state title, but there's a few teams that uh, I would uh, I would say have a pretty good chance. Who are the, who are the teams that make a deep run? Well, mind, two right? teams that, off the top of my head, Canfield and South Range. Right. I think Canfield and South Range possess a, a, a very balanced attack and – and defensively, they're they're a very good team. I, I I think both teams have a legitimate chance to win their regions. And as you know, though, making that that complete run, it, it's it gets it's harder tough. and harder each week, and it's no gimme. And a lot of things have to fall your way. It's tough. I mean, you got to play five extra weeks, and you're not playing against the zero and nine, uh, one and seven, two and eight teams. Yeah. I mean, you're playing against quality teams every single week, and you're going to get tested. And that's one of the reasons why I have advocated for teams to challenge their kids and play tougher non-conference schedules. If you get into the playoffs, 
you're going to be facing this caliber of competition. Right. So you might as well play them in the early part of your season and then come playoff time, hey, we did this earlier in the year. We can do this again. You know, w one thing that people do is they rate, uh, you know, an area in terms of their athletics uh, with the number of state championships they have. And, um, of course, we had JFK last year, and it's been a little thin with that over recent seasons. But nonetheless... We still have great football in this area, among, among other high school sports. Baseball sure. is, is really good. And, you know, sh certainly you strive to, to win it all, but that doesn't mean you don't have good programs, players, coaches. You know, I, uh, I absolutely. we have that. Now, I don't think our football is as good as it was, say, 20 or 30 years ago. Our population is down. It, absolutely. So, you know. Our population was cut in half yeah. after Black Monday, uh, and it's still dropping, sure. you know, which is crazy, but, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get an upswing here pretty soon. I've argued for the last three years, I think our baseball in this is. area is better than our football. It, it is. Really been good. Yeah, our baseball's been years. very good to us the last five yeah, years. Absolutely. Softball as well. Absolutely, yeah. Look what Champion has done. Um, we only have a couple moments left, but, uh, of course, I know you're involved with YSU as well and the football team and where they're at right now. A couple of tough losses, again, as we take this show, the Penguins coming off and looking to rebound. But uh, still, I feel pretty good, and I don't know what your thoughts are, that they still have postseason in, in, on the radar screen. I'm a glass-half-full kind of guy. Yeah. If you think about it, three, three plays from being a 6-0 and team and probably ranked number one in the country. You lose in overtime to Pitt. You lose on the last play of the game against yeah. South Dakota. You lose on the last play in overtime against North Dakota State. Three plays... You could be a six and zero team and be number one in the state of in the, in the United States. That being said, they have got to close out those close yeah, games. Absolutely, they, they have to get it done. I, I think if this team finishes eight and three or seven and four, they're in the playoffs and they will be a dangerous playoff team. And you know, and he's done a nice job at as a filling in for uh, Hunter Wells, but uh, they're doing it with. You know, there are two at quarterbacks. Yeah, so absolutely. Nathan's done a nice job. but uh, And Nathan's done a great job, yeah. but when Hunter comes back, I, I anticipate the offense to be even better. We only have a few seconds to go. This guy's a master at impersonations, and I, I wish we had more time to do more. But you have to do uh, do a quick Howard Cosell. Hello again, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell sitting back next to the legend from Youngstown, Ohio. One and only Mr. James Evans. Right there! <laughs> and before we finish, and I just saw it recently, Blazing Saddles was on. You do the best slim pickings. And Blazing Saddles fans, you know, you know what we're talking about. you got to do our man Slim. What in the wide, wide world of sports is a going on here? <laughs> perfect. I mean, perfect. Right on it. Thanks, brother. Great right. job. Appreciate it, man. Great job. And, uh, thanks for coming in. Man. Appreciate it. We'll be back to wrap it up here on Loose Change right after this. Breaking Bread is Armstrong's ongoing initiative to help feed the hungry in our community. To date, food and funds have been distributed to over 20 food banks. These organizations need our support throughout the year. Donations can be made at your local Armstrong office. Also, look for special Breaking Bread events in your area. All efforts benefit area food banks and soup kitchens. For more information, like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Armstrong One Wire. Hey, that's going to do it for our show. Thanks so much to Ron Potesta and for Greg Roden. I'm Jim Evans. Please look out for us again here on Loose Change. We'll see you then. Thank you.